Hi everybody, I'm Zach Collins with Scorpion Racing Products and today I want to take a few minutes to answer another one of our most frequently asked questions, what causes a rocker arm to break? In our experience, there are multiple different options as to what the root cause for a rocker arm failure is. Nine times out of 10, it's not an actual fault of the rocker arm itself. It's something that was done improperly in the insulation process, something that's not correctly matched in the actual application itself for that specific engine, or physical interference in the valve train itself. Um, there are several areas on the rocker arm where clearances have to be checked during installation that are critical to the rocker arm's function. The first is the push rod area where we already have a push rod clearance cut underneath the push rod seat. Um, during the entire, throughout the entire range of motion um, of the rocker through its lift cycle, um, you wanna make sure that the push rod does not rub on the back here. We have had instances where a push rod tip and it's a three piece push rod where it has a tip pressed in. There's a small step there where the push rod tube transitions into the actual tip itself. And it starts to wear a groove into the back of the rocker arm, which causes a sharp edge, which causes a stress riser and can also be uh, the point where a crack's gonna initiate in the back. Uh, there's a very high stress area around the push rod seat. Um, so that's one of the common failures we've seen uh, when the push rod interferes with the rocker body and starts to remove material and initiates a crack there. Um, another area where clearance is critical, and we've seen several failures due to this, um, is under the nose of the rocker arm. Uh, making sure that the roller is actually on the valve tip um, is pretty crucial in the installation process. If you don't check that clearance, what can actually happen is the retainer can actually hit underneath the nose here, and normally it's in this area next to our clearance cut. Um, if the retainer's taller than usual or the valve tip's a little shorter than usual, um, it does allow the roller to fall down in the retainer, and the retainer actually may be higher than that valve tip. It's hard for the roller on the rocker to reach that valve tip if it's sunk down in that bowl, so to speak, inside the retainer. Um, there's a couple ways you can fix that without having to modify the parts, um, which would be to use a valve with a longer tip length, um, use minus 50 keepers or valve locks that move the retainer down on the valve to keep the tip more exposed, um, or actually get a different valve with a larger tip length, or instead of replacing the entire valve itself, just get lash caps that fit that diameter valve, which will add about 50 thousandths to the stack up on that height. If it interferes here, um, obviously underneath the nose is a very high stress area on the rocker assembly as well. So if there is any interference, it's gonna start to rub material off here and take away from that cross-sectional thickness. And once it gets to a certain point, especially due to the fact that it's gonna be a bunch of sharp edges, it's not gonna be a smooth, polished face from that interference. It's gonna create a lot of heat, a lot of friction. It's gonna work hard in this material here. It's gonna really accelerate the fatigue in that area. And then can also be based on how many sharp edges there are in that area can also be the initiation point of a crack that would actually cause the entire nose of the rocker arm to come off. There's a couple other failures that are common as well. Um, one is poor lubrication. I know in a lot of the applications today, there are restrictors in the engines that restrict the amount of oil that flows to the top of the engine to keep more oil down in what they call the priority um, area, which would be in the mains for the rod journals and the main journals of the crankshaft. Um, if you limit that flow of oil too much to a certain degree to the top of the engine, uh, there's not gonna be adequate oil to the rocker arm assembly uh, to keep the roller and the valve tip cool, to keep the push rod tip and the push rod seat interface cool, and also to keep enough lubrication in the roller bearings or bushings in the actual fulcrum or pivot point of the rocker arm itself to keep it cool and lubricated to where there's minimized wear. We've seen a lot of failures due to a lack of oil, uh, some of which are downstream effects of either an oil pump locking up, losing oil pressure, and then obviously it's just collateral damage from that point forward in the engine assembly. Um, but we have seen several instances where they're just, the engine was designed and the oil flow was restricted so much that the part actually didn't have enough oil and burned up within uh, hours of actually initially breaking in and running. Another couple things that can cause a rocker arm to break outside of physical interference and lubrication issues, mostly on power adder applications, um, you know, supercharged or blown applications and turbocharged applications, normally on the exhaust side, uh, if you advance the timing too much, you're opening the valve, the exhaust valve, too soon into the cylinder, and you're actually opening the valve against too much cylinder pressure, which puts a, a ton more load on all of the components in the valve train, not just the valve itself, but also on the rocker arm because the rocker arm is actually 
touching the valve and it interfaces with the valve tip at this roller, you're getting the same contact patch, so you don't have any additional area to spread that additional load out. So the pressure that it sees at that interface is very high and you're gonna deflect the body more. Um, so everything's gonna flex a lot more and everything's gonna be a lot more stressed. So we have seen several rocker arms break due to um, advanced ignition timing, mostly on the exhaust side. On the intake side, it's not as bad because you're letting all the fuel and air into the engine. Um, but on the exhaust side, since it's already, the combustion process is already complete and you have a bunch of pressure in the cylinder, you're trying to open up against too much pressure. And we've seen as much as two to four degrees make all the difference in the world to keep the valve train happy for long periods of time. Um, outside of those physical interference issues, over time, some of the things you'll see that cause a rocker arm to break will be uh, poorly designed or mismatched valve train components. Uh, not having enough spring to adequately control the rocker assembly and the valve train in general, either at high RPM or with a very aggressive camshaft profile. Um, so you'll get what's known as valve float, um, where you actually, because the spring isn't strong enough to keep the actual valve in control, the valve will actually continue to open down into the cylinder uh, and will actually come off of the rocker, uh, the rocker, the roller on the rocker as well. Um, so when that happens, the valve float, obviously there's a collision that happens on the backside of that. Once the valve floats, it's no longer under control and then starts to come back up and it comes back up in an uncontrolled fashion and then there's gonna be an impact on this roller from the valve itself. And there also may be another impact on the push rod side if it actually it floats enough to create enough slack in the assembly, enough clearance in the overall stack up of the assembly to allow the push rod seat to come off the push rod tip. You're gonna start beating up push rod tips. You're gonna start wearing out rollers and valve tips. You're gonna get some uneven wear there. And also the bearings in the assembly do not like impact. Anything that really sees impact, uh, bearings are not really rated for. Um, this is a bearing that normally reciprocates. Any type of impact to it or any type of harmonic vibration is gonna shorten its life as well. Um, so that's something else to consider. A lot of times at high RPM with aggressive camshaft profiles, trying not to use too much spring. Um, there's actually not enough spring in there to control the valve train as a whole. So you get that lofting and you also get that valve float. And then on the back side of that, you'll also get the lifter to bounce on the cam lobe and everything is not really in control. And there's a lot of vibrations in the valve train itself that cause the components to fail sooner than they should. Um, give a, a long life if everything's happy and everything's under control. Um, so that's one of the more long-term um, causes of failure that we've seen. A lot of the physical interference issues and the, the excessive cylinder pressure and advanced ignition timing um, will happen in a more rapid period of time, as well as the lack of lubrication or proper lubrication. Um, those will accelerate that failure process as well. Outside of that, the other cause of failure that we've seen, uh, we have some customers running these rocker arms for upwards of 10 or 15 years. After a certain amount of cycles, the fatigue life of the material comes into play to where that material no longer has the initial mechanical and physical properties that it did when it was new. Um, so as you cycle out these parts, uh, the fatigue life comes into play over a certain number, a certain million cycles, and that's actually gonna cause the part itself, just due to the material properties, to be weaker and not be able to take those same loads that it did when it was brand new material and not put through all those aggressive cycles. So I hope that explains some of the more common failures that we see as to what can cause a rocker arm to break. Uh, most of those can be avoided outside of running the part too long, outside of its fatigue life window. Proper lubrication, proper valve train setup, matching the springs to your application, your RPM range, your camshaft profile, and double checking interference and clearances in the assembly during installation will save the rocker arm from any type of premature failure and give you a long lasting part that you're happy with and is happy performing for you. Thank you.